Hi Flosstube, I'm Lori and welcome to Once Upon a Stitch. <clears throat> Excuse me, already <laughs> dry throat. Take one. Uh, today is Monday, January 17th, 2022. Thank you for coming and joining me for another episode. To all my regulars, I'm so glad that you come back all the time. I love sharing my stitching with you, my little bits of life and um, a little bit of quilting. Today I will have a little bit, but I'll save it for the end for those that um, choose to bow out at that time. But welcome, and if you're new to my channel, I hope you like what you see. Um, go back a few episodes. I have a planning video. I have a whip video. Um, I hope you enjoy it. Okay, let's get right to it because I have a lot of things to share with you. The first I'll do are, are questions that um, viewers have um, asked me. But also, I thought, you, you guys made me laugh out loud. <laughs> um, when I was showing his eyes on the sparrow, and I said, oh, a friend had said, you know, try to make it into a drum or something. I said, it had a drum. It'll be a footstool. Well, when you said it back to me, and the way, how you reacted to it, it made me laugh even more so. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you so much. Um, Somebody asked how I framed my pieces, and I meant to get the one that I showed last month about um, Be Naughty, Save Santa trip, and actually that was um, a thrift store find. The, the frame and the mat, it just came like that, and this piece just fit in, like, so perfectly. So basically, um, I don't even know if I just pinned it or if I laced it. I do try to lace... Um, a lot of the frame pieces that I do, but I basically do it on, if I'm going to put it into a frame permanently, I usually use foam core board and I lace the piece and then I show my husband and he says, oh, it looks crooked. And then I unlace it and do it again. <laughs> that has happened. And I just want him to say, oh, it's fine, but he doesn't. He's like, ah. So... <laughs> So anyway, I try to get it as straight as possible, and then it gets to a point where, okay, it's good enough. So um, I do frame my own pieces. I haven't sent anything to the framer yet. Um, I do have pieces that are not framed because I'm just looking for the right frame. Um, but thanks to Kim Goldman, who is the contented stitcher, she put a video out on how she cuts down, explains how she cuts down frames and this frame stretcher. Um, once you cut it down and you glue it in place, you put these four corners in and you tighten it so it gets a nice firm um, square or a rectangle. So I bought one of those and my husband uh, did do a frame for me and that was um, one for the bookshelf that I showed, oh, I don't know if it was two or three videos. It was before Christmas because it was a Christmas gift. And because of the way the world is today, I didn't get to see my uh, niece to give it to her. So um, we're hoping in a couple of weeks to have everybody over if um, everybody is fine. And um, well, I, I didn't want to mail it to her. I wanted to see her expression because she's not expecting anything. So, um, so yeah, so that was a that's a lot. I can't wait for that. Okay, um, somebody said they don't like joining groups because they don't like rules. And basically, I think I get what I get done is because I do like rules. But I like breaking rules sometimes too. But for the most part, I like that there's rooms. I uh, rules. I like to be, uh, what's the word, it just came into my mind and it flew out. Um, maybe it'll come back. Disciplined, that's the word. I like being disciplined and I feel that if I'm not, I don't get as much accomplished. I like, it all, but in all things, and I think that's why I make myself a little crazy sometimes, but I find that if I have rules, for myself, I get more accomplished. I, you know, I used to, <laughs> I used to be at work and write when it was slow, I used to write down things to do when I got home. And half the time I never did those things, but I used to write them down all the time. 
So I do like rules for the most part, but then again, like I said, I do break them. Then somebody asked me, um, what, floss, what white floss do I use? 99% um, of the time I use B52100 because I, when I stitch white, I like it to show, um, unless like the piece calls for 3865, I would use that as well. Um, and it all depends on the fabric. If it's a light fabric, I try, then I try to do 5200 because it seems to pop more. So um, for the most part, it's B5200 that I use, DMC. Um, somebody made a, must have been watching a prior video and they said they were trying to catch up. And they made a comment that, oh, I just saw you put together Caleb's quilt. Oh, by the time I catch up to your videos, it'll be all quilted. It's not quilted. That's one of my things that I want to get um, started on. Um, quilting. I want to do the, I, I love doing the piecing. And then when it gets to the quilting, I'm usually like, oh, okay, okay. Well, that's going to be one of my things I want to do. In the next two months. January, February, I'm going to work on it. I'm going to try it. I'm going to be disciplined about it. Okay, and then somebody asked about, they must have seen um, a previous video, and they asked about this hanger that I have where I put my Country Cottage, Monthly Cottage series on them. This is the January one. I brought it up from downstairs, and I, I told her that I would measure it and show her on camera. So basically, it's about seven and a half inches at the top and oh let me I'll take this off okay there's a hope there's a opening here so when you make your little quilt you put a little sleeve on it and then you just scoot it all the way one side and then scoot, scoot it back but this is the frame in itself it's see if I can do it this way it's backwards um, it's about nine and a half inches to the base and basically the quilt can almost be nine and a half inches um, to the so that it lays in here let's see what mine measures excuse me the tape measure fell my little quilt here measures eight and a half inches long by eight and three quarters wide. So, um, so it, it, it just hangs like right there. You could go a little bit longer if you wanted to. This was almost a square. So, and where I bought this was, I purchased this at a um, quilt show. Uh, there used to be, there's a company that out of Pennsylvania, uh, New Hope, Pennsylvania. It's called the Mancuso uh, Quilt Fest. And um, they used to go around and come to New Jersey and have a, a quilt show. And I went like three or four times in a, you know, in a row when I was um, quilting and I just loved it and I miss it. And they haven't done it now in a couple of years. They were supposed to do it last year and then because of COVID, it was canceled again. So that's my little frame and that's where I bought it. And I honestly don't remember how much I paid for it. I just don't remember that one. Okay, so those are all the questions. Um, I'm going to, let's see. I just wanna tell you about some uh, floss tubers that I've watched. I'll be, I'll be brief. Um, there's four new ones that are new to me. And one was, Blushing Pink Stitches, and that's Lindsay, and I'll, I'll list them all uh, below so that um, if you'd like to check them out and you don't have to take notes, you can be stitching while you watch me. Uh, Lindsay comes from England. She lives in, in England, and she made a comment on my last video saying that I was one of the inspirations for her to make her video. So when she said that, I said, oh, she must have a video out. So I'm going to go look her up. And I did. And I was so happy that I did. She's lovely. And she does a lot of stitching for her daughter's room. And I just love her piece that says, get it done. And there's a little pun in that. But if you watch her, you'll find out what it what it is. And um, 
Okay, give her a try. Then there's Stitching with Sandy. She lives in California, and I love the story. I went back to her first video. I don't know if she has five or six out. I can't remember. But I went back to her first one to find out a little bit about her. And I love the story that she told about her French grandmother who taught her all the crafts that um, she, she knows. And as she got older, she learned more crafts from her. And it, it was a lovely story, it really was. Um, she is a full-time teacher, and but she gets a lot of stitching done. So um, I enjoy watching her. Then there's the absent-minded stitchers. And I believe they both had separate floss tubes, but they came together to make one to make them together from now on and that's Terry and Joe and they're so such good friends that it just like spews out on screen it's lovely I just enjoy watching them together it's so wonderful and um, what I'm so excited about is they're they mentioned that they're coming to the next New Jersey floss tube retreat which is in July and they're gearing up for it and every episode they're going to talk about how much they're excited to come. So I'm so excited because I'll be attending that and I'll be able to meet them in person. It's always exciting to meet people that you just know on a video or a text message or not a text message, but on Instagram or they say something on your channel and then you meet them. It's just really exciting. And then the last one I'm gonna tell you about is Stitching Granny of 17. Can you imagine at them all at the dinner table? And that's Deborah. And she has a number of uh, videos out and she does cross stitching and she has quilting videos. So I have to catch up on her quilting ones, but I see them in the background and I'm really drawn to them because they're bright, vivid colors and I just love it. So those are the four that I wanted to tell you about. Okay, without further ado, the giveaway winners. The first one was number one and we had, 47 people enter. Um, I, I keep track of them. I, I print, I write on the back of paper that I'm going to be throwing out. Uh, but the winner was Cheryl Ross. And I already um, made comments on their comments to let them know that they won. And Cheryl did respond to me. So Cheryl, hopefully um, by the end of this week, everybody will have gotten back to me and I will get to the post office to mail that out to you. The second one was, um, oh, I don't know if I showed the pattern, what she won. <laughs> she won the Ben Creek, Will You Stay a While, a snapper, and Goat Load by Plum Street. The second uh, giveaway is from Sarah Gurmani, an Italian designer, and that was Janine Draper. And we had 29 people put in for that, and number 15 was called Janine. So Janine, if you will, um, I'll put my email, I put my email address on the uh, message that I put on your message, or my Instagram account, whichever is easier, if you can just get me your address. Number three was um, 61 people put in for this, and that was Welcome Winter by Puntini Puntini. It does not come with the buttons, but it has where you can uh, stitch where the buttons belong. And we had 61 people enter. And number 50 was called, and that's Rebecca F. Rebecca F. Please send me your address and I will get that in the mail to you. And the fourth one, we had 38 people enter, and Kathy Foy, number 24, uh, won Madam Chantilly, Santa on a Bike. Alrighty, so those are the giveaway winners. I'm gonna do another giveaway in a, in a like one or two videos from now. Um, I, I went through my stash, um, to see what I want to give away, and I have a number of them. So in time, I'll just be having giveaways for no special reason, just to share with everybody. And I bought new ones to share as well. Okay, 
Um, I'm going to show you my past finishes for Valentine's Day. And the first one um, is a Lizzie Kate. And I believe this came from her Tidy Tidings Winter um, pamphlet. There's like four patterns in it. And the other ones were like um, lambs and snowmen, I believe. So, and then this one said sweetheart. So I stitched that one and then I just made it into a little pillow. And then I, I believe this is, I couldn't find the, pat, uh, the I might have given this away, um, the pattern for this one. And that's, oh, I believe this is a Lizzie Kate as well. And this is love. And then I just put a little hearts in the back. And this was actually stuffed with um, my orts the clippings from my stitching. That's what this is stuffed with. <laughs> Put them to good use. And then this is Heart and Hand. It's in the Bird and Hand series. And this was called Valentine's Day. And this is actually a little pocket that I made in here. I um, used a fusible web on the back of the stitching here. And um, I top stitched the rickrack here and then I laid it face up on the face up pattern fabric and then right sides together with this piece and then stitched around and I sew up the bottom so this would be a nice uh, scissor holder so I really like the way that came out well, I guess you could put lollipops in there and the last previous finish I'm going to show you is Just Nan Designs, and this is called Lovebird Tree. And I won this pattern from Brian from Blitz Stitch. And I got this pattern, uh, this pattern, this frame at um, Goodwill for $1.99. Tag still on it. <laughs> so I put that out. And then in my last video, I showed you that I had some starts and finishes, and I finished some of them. And this is the first one. This is Heart and Hand Valentine's. And I just put some, looks like hearts to me, so I think hearts going in different directions. Then this was Ben Creek, I believe love you more and I just put some uh, rickrack that matched the back fabric here these little pillows are harder to do than the bigger ones and then I did puntini puntini when I think of winter and I stuffed this with polyfill but I also put some walnut shells I'm the type of person that when I hear something new, sometimes I like I can't get it fast enough. I went to the pet store. I went to two pet stores to see like who had the best price of it, got a big bag of it, and I let it sit and sit and sit. Um, so I finally says, you know what? I'm going to do it on this pillow. And I put polyfill in first, try to poke out the corners with the polyfill. And then I, um, I had it open at the bottom. And then I poured in the uh, walnut shells and I used, um, this, this comes with the poly, polyfill that I had gotten at Joann's at one point. And I used this to like push it into the corners and push it around. And then at the very end, I put polyfill on the top um, to prevent any leakage or anything. And I also um, lined it with interfacing so that it wouldn't come through the fabric hopefully. And then I let it go because I had, we, um, we went over to uh, Michael and Rebecca's for dinner yesterday, lunch, dinner. Um, it was Rebecca's birthday. So Michael cooked and he did a great job. So I didn't have time to think about doing more to this. I was thinking of putting the, tr this trim on it and I'm still on the fence about it. I kind of like it without but um, this it's showing a lot bluer on camera than it is in real life. It looks more like a navy blue to me, uh, but it's looking more like a royal blue on, on the camera. So I haven't decided 
but um, I do like the way it just looks just like that and the back fabric I love that too I got that ha that at Hobby Lobby um, okay so let's see I did everything on the first page of my notes okay whoops um let's see I think I gave, made a video around the 6th of January and I showed you those new starts and the and that I, I finished them and I showed a few uh, whips that I had done in the end of December. So now I'm working on my whips again, but today I'm going to have a new start. Today is January 17th. My mother would have been 100 years old. So uh, today I'm going to start and be kind. Uh, by Needlework Press. I'll show you that at the end. But uh, let's get to my whips. Okay, the first project that I worked on was Autumn in the Village. And this is by Stony Creek. And I had a lamppost and some grass and a tree. And it's done. I'm so excited. I'll bring, come in close so you can see the details. I think it's beautiful. Um, when I was doing all that outlining, I was like, but you know what? I didn't mind the outlining, to be honest. I, I really didn't. Um, because I did it as I was going. I didn't have to go back and make sure I missed along the way. So... Um, yeah, I really love this piece. Oops. So um, I'll, I'll talk about it after I do all my whips, but um, I'm going to mention about um, March Madness. Okay, the next one I worked on was Long Dog Sampler, Templar Prophecy. Oh, and I did um, Autumn in the Village on a 28 count ivory. Lugana. Two over two. Next I did temp worked on Templar Prophecy and um, this is my focus piece and I finished page 14. Yay! I have one more to go. So I that's page 14 right there on this side the horse with the knight and everything below it. So I have one more page to go for it to be a completion. And this is stitched on a 28 count. Let's see how far back do I have to go. I have a uh, area rug that the chair constantly gets caught on. Um, love this piece. It's on a white Lugana. I don't know if I told you that. 28 count, two over two with anchor 403 black. And it's for my son, Michael. Okay, let's go back in the back. And I will work on that in February. And this will be one of my March Madness pieces. Cottage Garden Samplings, Forever and Ever. And I was going to get a whiteboard. I don't know if it'll. And I finished it. So I did the female cardinal and two leaves behind its tail. Uh, to complete this. The rest was, had been all done. Come in a little bit closer for you. So I'm very happy that I completed this. And um, now I can focus on something else. Loved working on that. It wasn't a difficult pattern. Um, And it was a colored pattern, which I liked. 
Um, the next one that I picked up was a start I started last year, In Full Glory by Blackbird Design. And I finished it. And I made an error. This is my finish. This is on a 28 count country mocha, a piece that I had left over. And what I did incorrectly was the flag is over one too many and it should be down one. Um, so I had to uh, compensate on the border a little bit. But other than that, it came out, it came out fine. <laughs> and that's my finish on it. And I haven't decided how I'm going to finish it yet, but it's stitched. So I have a couple of months before I would put it out in this for display. So I maybe see something that is different and um, at Hobby Lobby or something that I can use for fix finishing. The next one is Prairie Schooler, the tortoise and the hare. And I was stitching this one here. And we have a finish Ooh, and a piece of lint with thread. And here's the tortoise and the hare. Slow and steady wins the race. I had said that I had a, a stitch a, a hair here because it wasn't there, but no, it's the turtle that wins the race. So, um, so I stitched all this, a tree, a rabbit, and then all the bottom in order to finish this this time. So I'm very happy with it. I will frame this. I did uh, two others by Prairie Schooler of the Story Time series. So. Um, yeah, I love them. I love working on Prairie Schooler. Schooler. To me, that's like comfort stitching. Okay, the next one is the Frosted Pumpkin. Once Upon a Time, and they're Aesop stories. And I have a finish. The last one was December Block that I stitched. And I had to go around the border um, at, in that corner to, to complete it and put in the year 2022. And I'm happy with it. And I might make this into a little quilt wall hanging. Um, I'll have to bring it with me to the quilt store. Well, there, the quilt store here is very limited, but I can go to Hobby Lobby or, or Joanne's and see what kind of fabric I would um, use for this. So I'm very happy that it's completed. So, alrighty. And that's it as far as what I've stitched. This is the one I will be starting today. And be kind to one another by Needlework Press. And I start at the top. So, oh, and my goal, let's see, did I write my goal on here? My 2020 goal would be to complete the first two alphabets. I find might be, um, and that's within the whole year. So that would be like up to here. So that's one alphabet and then two alphabets. So if I can get up to here, that would, that would mean I've met my goal on this piece. Okay. And I'm stitching that on a 28 count vanilla swirl. Lugana. And I believe it was all DMC. Was it DMC? No, Classic Color Works. Classic Color Works. All Classic Color Works. And I did get all the colors for that. And that's it as far as stitching. But what I was going to tell you about um, March Madness was a lot of these that I finished, Tortoise and the Hare, Once Upon a Stitch, Autumn in the Village, they were all supposed to be in my March Madness. I didn't think I was going to finish them this month. And when I, every time I picked them up and I like finished them, I was like, this wasn't supposed to happen. So I have, I'm going to put, of course, other um, whips in uh, March Madness. And what I was trying to do was trying to put the whips in that I would like to see finished in 2022. 
not thinking it was going to be finished in January because January the theme was new starts and pos and finishes for this month, uh, year. So um, that being said, um, I'm going to have to pick some other p um, whips that I have started and I'll put it in for March Madness. And what I'll do is, let's see, what's today's date? The 17th, I'll come back the beginning of, or the end of January, beginning of February. I'll see how much I have to show, basically. But I'll, I'll be somewhere in, in the beginning of February or end of January. But I think it's the following one. I'll pick the, the all the March Madness whips that I have. I'm going to put the names in a bowl, pull them out, and I'll just pull it out in front of you so that um, what, however they fall, like Templar Prophecy against I don't know, Mary, uh, Mary Clayton. Like if I pull those two, they'll go against each other. And then I'll pull another two. And basically, I think how I'll do it is how I move forward from it is once I stitch each one two days, I'll see which one's closer to a finish and that one will be the one that moves forward. Now, if I finish something in the middle of this, then the one that it was against, then that one will move forward. I hope that wasn't confusing. But, um, so now on my whip go board, what I wanted to say was, um, those, those patterns were on my whip go board. So where I keep track of it is, so the number that was called was two and 19, the ones that are outlined in yellow. And then on this paper, I keep track of, I outline them as well. And in January, I stitched on number two, which was the tiny modernist. And the goal here was for a finish. I did not finish it, but I worked on it on January 5th and 6th. So, um, so I just wrote down the days that I worked on it. This one is Tiny Mo no, that's the one, 19, is Scarlet House, A Perfect World, and I'm to stitch 15 hours um, to be able to mark this square. So far, I haven't touched it this month. But I'm after I do all the whips that I want to finish in 2022, I have a couple of days left because some of those little ones I, I was able to finish in a day instead of the two. So I'll have a, an extra day, so I'll be able to do two days on um, the perfect world. And I'll get some hours in. I don't know um, how many, but I'll get some hours and I'll keep track on the back sheet. Now I also kept track of the ones that I completed. So they're completed, but they don't get crossed out until the number's called. I hope that wasn't too confusing. Alrighty. So, um, oh, my quilting. Um, I had said that I wanted to quilt more. So in order to get into the mood of it, I decided to make myself a project bag um, following Bonner Pfeiffer, the tw twisted stitcher. Uh, but if you put in Bonner Pfeiffer, I'll write her name at the bottom. She has a lot of tutorials and a lot of people um, have learned so much from her, including myself. And um, I did her project bag. I was going to, I, I bought this beautiful fabric, beautiful, adorable. It's snowmen and on a red fabric. And I was so excited to do it like this. But I, if I did, the snowmen would end up being upside down because you, you lay out the fabric and then you bring up half and then the lid to the top, let's say, I'll show you what I mean. This part would be upside down. This part would be right side up. And then the back would be upside down. So, um, because it's a directional uh, print. But this one, it really didn't make a difference of how it laid. Um, yeah, you're laying on the beach, it could go that way. So I wasn't too concerned. And um, I don't know if you can tell, but it, it is quilted. It's there. I quilted it for more stability. Um, I tried this without quilting it, and I made two like that, and I did not like them, and I do not use them because they don't have stability. I like the um, ones that have a little bit more stability. So I do like quilting a couple of lines in it. And then I used a Velcro and I stitched it on on both. And that's the inside fabric. And I have in here 
stitching beach face and I love this pattern I can't wait to uh, do this I don't I think I have it scheduled for April but I thought I'd show it to you in my new little beach bag so um, so yeah that was a lot of fun see like she's she's laying straight up and down so to, you know like it wasn't predominantly in one direction so um, so that's why this one worked and that's my quilting that I have to share. So on that note, I'll see you in about two weeks. I hope to have um, a lot of stitching to share with you. And who knows what else I get accomplished. So uh, check out those new floss tubers. I'm sure they um, love to hear from you. And thank you so much for sticking with me to the end. And I will see you soon. Love you guys. Mwah. Take care. Bye.